hi in this video let's discuss the various components and working mechanism of an x-ray machine so this is a schematic representation of an x-ray machine this is in specific called as x-ray tube so this entire setup is present within tube head which is attached to a wall by means of an arm so as you can see here this is an x-ray tube which has a glass wall all over and within this glass wall or glass enclosure you can find a cathode an anode and it's entirely vacuum inside so there is no air or any gas present right so apart from this this entire glass case is enclosed by oil so this oil acts as an insulating medium and now let's discuss each component of x-ray machine in detail starting with cathode so coming to cathode it's basically negatively charged so this is a cathode here it's negatively charged and cathode in x-ray machine is made up of a tungsten filament this is important so as you can see in this schematic diagram this is a filament which is called as a tungsten filament so it serves as a cathode and this tungsten filament has specific dimensions so the diameter of this tungsten filament is 2 mm whereas the length is less than one centimeter this is very very important so this tungsten filament which serves as a cathode has a dimensions of length less than one centimeter and diameter around 2 mm right so apart from this this is connected to two strong stiff wires through which electricity is passed so when the moment electricity is passed through this wire this entire coil gets heated up so as a result of which it starts emitting electrons so the source of electrons or cathode rays within the x-ray machine is the cathode so on heating this coil there will be liberation of electrons and as you can see here there is a concave focusing cup so this concave focusing cup is made up of molybdenum which is also negatively charged so even this concave focusing cup is made of negatively charged particles as a result of which it repels the electrons which are produced from this filament towards the anode so this focusing cup which is made up of molybdenum helps in repelling the electrons which are being released from the tungsten filament so that those electrons are pushed towards the anode right so this is in brief about cathode now let's discuss about anode so anode is made up of tungsten again and the reason why we're choosing tungsten over other metals is because of following reasons so tungsten basically has very high atomic number which is around 74 not around which is exactly 74 and it has very high melting point which is around 3400 degrees centigrade and also it has very high thermal conductivity and very low vapor pressure this is very very important the reason why we are choosing an anode which is positively charged the anode material is also made up of tungsten because of the following reason since it has high atomic number the rate of formation of x-ray photons is much more efficient and higher and also since the melting point is very high so this anode is prevented from getting melted because of the high speed electrons which are entering and impinging onto the anode and also because of its high thermal conductivity as the electrons impinge at a greater velocity there is a lot of heat production which can be efficiently transmitted towards the copper stem which is attached behind this anode and also this low vapor pressure helps to maintain the vacuum present within this glass enclosure so that's the reason why we are choosing tungsten as an anode material in case of an x-ray machine and this anode is attached to a copper stem which is again a very good conductor of heat as a result of which the heat which is produced at the anode area is being dissipated efficiently thereby preventing the burnout of the 
machine right so if you can notice here the moment we are passing electricity through this tungsten coil there is formation or production of electrons and these are being released and they are traveling at greater speeds hitting a particular area in the anode and this shaded area is called as focal spot. So this shaded area is called as focal spot and it has a dimension of 1 into 3 mm. So for the image characteristics to be superior that is for the image to have superior sharpness. So sharpness is the ability to identify the outline of an image with clarity. So to have better sharpness sharpness or improved sharpness the focal spot size has to be as small as possible however when we decrease the size of the focal spot there can be more heat generation leading to melting or even burnout of the filament within the x-ray machine so to overcome that what we are trying to do here is we're trying to angulate this focal spot at 20 degrees compared to the central axis of the x-ray so when we are angulating this focal spot what happens is the apparent size of the focal spot reduces which is around 1 into 1 mm. So when I was quoting you an example of a selfie, I mentioned that when you angulate your phone at a greater height and take pics, we appear more slim and lean. It's because of foreshortening. So similarly here, when we are angulating this focal spot and view this focal spot from this area, that is from an area perpendicular to the direction of the cathode rays. So this is the direction of cathode rays. And if we view this focal spot from an area which is perpendicular to that of the cathode rays, the apparent size of the focal spot is only 1 into 1 mm this is very important so as a result of which as a result of this decrease in the apparent size of the focal spot the image sharpness improves however since the original dimension of the focal spot remains the same there will be much better or efficient heat dissipation as usual right so that's the advantage we have by angulating this focal spot right hope it's clear and when i was discussing regarding the internal environment we should maintain a vacuum right so this vacuum is being maintained in order to prevent collision of these high speed electrons with various air molecules so what happens when there is collision is that first thing is when there is collision of these electrons with air molecules the speed of these electrons might decrease thereby leading to formation of low energy x-ray photon and also if there is presence of air within this glass enclosure there can be burnout of the filament or oxidation of the filament so to prevent this we're trying to maintain vacuum right so when we are passing a current through this tungsten filament it gets heated up and the temperature of this filament is directly proportional to the quantity of electrons that are being released that is the greater the temperature of the filament the greater would be the number of electrons being released so once these electrons are released because of this electrostatic repulsion from this molybdenum focusing cup and also because of the attraction from the opposite charge these electrons travel in this direction impinge upon this focal spot and here we have two characteristic interactions happening that is Bremsstrahlung radiation and also characteristic radiation which we'll discuss in the next subsequent videos and because of those interactions there will be formation of x-ray photons right so x-ray photons are produced in this direction and this x-ray photons have a central beam and a diverging beam right that's how x-rays are being produced in an x-ray machine and this entire glass wall is enclosed within an insulating oil which helps in dissipating heat which is produced as a result of collision of these electrons onto this focal spot, right? So this mode of anode is called as stationary anode as it is not moving. And we have another kind of anode called as rotating anode. So when the electrons impinge upon this rotating anode they actually impinge on a small area of the anode so as the anode moves on or rotates continuously the electrons impinge upon the successive areas of this rotating anode so what i'm trying to imply here is the apparent focal area remains smaller as a result of which the image sharpness is improved Moreover, the heat dissipation is also improved because the actual size of this anode is larger, right? So that's how we are trying to obtain superior sharpness with better heat dissipation in case of rotating anodes. And most importantly, with rotating anodes, 
this can be operated with currents of 100 to 500 milliamperes which is 10 to 50 times greater to the amount of current which we use in case of stationary anode. So these rotating anodes are mainly used when we need higher doses of radiation for sustained duration as in case of computed tomographic machines, CT machines for medical uses etc. Whereas these stationary anodes are sufficient for dental uses. So this is in brief about the components of X-ray machine and its working mechanism. Thank you.